by banning Ukraine from attacking targets in Russia, Biden gave Putin a gift. The Sunday Times. By prohibiting Ukraine from attacking targets on the territory of the Russian Federation, US President Joe Biden made a gift to Russian ruler Vladimir Putin. Columnist Dominic Lawson writes about this in his material for the Sunday Times. He recalls that despite the fact that the head of the White House, insisting that he will do whatever is necessary to support Ukraine's attempt to repel Putin's army, refuses to allow Kyiv to use American weapons on or even over Russian territory. This policy has now proven fatal for the Ukrainians. Russian troops are destroying Kharkov, placing weapons right in the front of the border, and if they make further territorial gains, they will move to the second city of Ukraine into the range of their artillery. Then complete destruction will begin. However, Ukraine still does not allow the use of US weapon systems to attack warehouses and bases that devastate it, the author states. According to him, the point is not only that Washington demands from Kyiv guarantees that weapons provided by the West are not used in Russia itself. Most of these modern systems are geo-fenced. This means that a weapon's GPS can be programmed to prevent it from operating in a specific geographic area, in this case, the Russian territory. Denying Ukraine the ability to target the source of the attack on Kharkov and Ukrainian infrastructure in general defeats even the clear goal of US policy, which is that there should be some kind of negotiated peace agreement between Moscow and Kiev. Because Putin is not only not interested in any settlement that leaves Ukraine fully sovereign, the only thing that would motivate him to negotiate is the thought that he might actually be defeated militarily or at least fail to achieve what he wants through terror and bombing, writes Lawson. 40 Palestinians were killed in an overnight Israeli strike on a refugee camp in Rafah. The attack hit a camp for displaced people in northwest Rafah, a site that is in a designated humanitarian safe zone, Gaza civil defense and Palestinian authorities said. Women and children were among those killed. Several people were injured in the strike. We are facing difficulties reaching the wounded, civil defense workers said. In a statement, Hamas slammed the bombing as complete defiance and disregard for the decision of the International Court of Justice that demanded it to stop its aggression against Rafah. It also noted that Israel would not have committed without the U.S. support and green light, saying to hold the U.S. administration fully responsible for the deadly attack. The Israel Defense Forces said in a statement that, an Israel Defense Forces aircraft struck a Hamas compound in Rafah in which significant Hamas terrorists were operating. The strike was carried out against legitimate targets under international law, using precise munitions and on the basis of precise intelligence that indicated Hamas use of the area, it added. The Israeli airstrike came hours after Al-Qassam brigades, the Hamas armed wing, launched a large rocket barrage from Rafah towards the coastal city of Tel Aviv in central Israel for the first time in months. To be noted, the targeted area, which is crowded with thousands of displaced persons, was previously declared as a safe zone by the occupation. Come on, 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 come on,